Welcome, everybody. I'm Noreen Savage, and this is Starting Out Bright. I'm so glad you're here. And just to let you know who I am, if we've not met before, and who I'm not, first of all, I'm nobody official with Brightline Eating, but I've really enjoyed the program. It's going on three years that I've been using Brightline Eating. And the way that I found out about it was simply on Facebook. My friend Lori posted on her one year birthday, one year doing bright line eating and told the world that she lost 57 pounds with this program, <clears throat> excuse me. And if anybody was interested, they could just send her a message. So my hot little fingers got over to messenger as quick as they could. And I wanted to find out the scoop. Well, Lori proceeded to tell me that it was bright line eating a book by Dr. Susan Pierce Thompson and that there were four bright lines that you don't cross. No sugar, no flour, three meals a day, weighed in measured portions. And when she told me that, I was sick, just sick, because I thought there's absolutely no way, no way I could do this. You mean all kinds of flour, all kinds of sweetener, even artificial? And if you're familiar with bright line eating, you know the answer is not, not a, none of it. So... I thought, no way I could do it, but we got together for lunch. She proceeded to tell me more and convince me to do two things. One, get the book, read the book, and get into the community. At that time, she suggested we eat bright with lines. There are many other groups, including Starting Out Bright, which is associated with these Zoom chats, and We Eat Bright and Exercise, which I got to know Angela from. And so you'll find out more about that group. Now, I got into the We We Write With Lines group, and I just sat and watched and read the stories and saw the amazing photographs of transformations happening before my very eyes of people from all over the world losing weight, sometimes a little, five, 10 pounds if that's what they needed, but many times 50 or 100 or 150. And that's what I needed because where I was at was heavy numbers. I was 270 with five foot two inches and I was in a lot of pain. I had swollen feet for about a year, excruciating pain in my knee. I snored every night, keeping my husband awake with sleep apnea too. Neuropathy, you know, I, I knew diabetes was around the corner for me. And so I was actually at a point of pain and getting scared. And so that became, though, the willingness for me to try one more time, one more thing. And after in this group of support, I promised myself that if I lasted one year, with doing bright line eating, I would do what my friend Lori did. I would post on my private Facebook page and I would help anybody I could. Well, the year came up in July, 2020. 
here we are in the middle of a pandemic. I'm getting ready to post my one year news. And I'm a Christian. I felt God say to me, Noreen, you can do more than that. You could do Zooms. You could connect these people. The people who have helped you so much by giving you hope and help those who are struggling and just need a lifeline, need some help and some good information. And so that's how the Zooms were born. One by one, people would answer yes to a total stranger to, and be willing to tell their story. And so it wasn't too long ago I got a hold of Angela. And we'll, we'll tell the story more, but the first time around when I asked, she thought maybe we should wait. And there was a reason for it. But this time around, she said yes. And I'm so glad you're here. Help me welcome Angela Shaner. Hi, Angela. Thank you. Thank you. I just love your interviews, Maureen. I actually think I've watched every single interview over the years. I can't believe you've been doing it for two years. Is that what you yes, said? Yes, it's about two years. Yeah. Quite amazing. Oh. It, nobody's more oh, surprised than me. You're number 91. Oh my goodness. I'm honored. I really am honored to be here. So thank you. Well, thanks for being here, Angela. You know, um, I told a little bit about my story, but I want to give you the stage now to just set us up where you were coming okay. into Bright Line Eating. You can go back as far as you want. Okay. But, you know, wherever you want to start, just let us okay. know how this all happened. Yeah. So where to begin? I mean, I will start at the beginning because um, my story might be a little different than than the typical Bright Line Eating story. I don't come from big numbers. Um, but my relationship with food, um, I'll, I'll get into it. So, I mean, I started, I was a pretty healthy, active kid into a lot of things involved in school things. Um, but as a kid, I always had stomach issues. I had food would, food just didn't agree with me very good. I had stomach issues, especially with dairy and sugar, but I didn't know exactly what foods were causing my problems until I got older. But um, I was pretty in tune with my body, I would say, as a kid, because I uh, honestly, I would hardly eat sugar and soda because of how it would make me feel. I just was more in tune. I didn't eat it because it made me feel so sick. Sugar would make me feel so sick. I was tested for diabetes and different things. And um, I always struggled with hypoglycemia, too, just low blood sugar. And so the things I was eating was either causing a reaction or not. And so I really had to, to get good at, at stabilizing that, but I just didn't understand it when I was younger, you know? Um, and hunger to me, because of the hypoglycemia, hunger to me has always been an emergency, always. And so I really had to change my brain in the way I thought about hunger. Um, because to, to me, I've always eaten like every two hours, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's funny because as a senior in my high school, we were allowed to decorate our, our, um, our parking spot. We had our own parking spot. And mine said breakfast, lunch, and dinner because my friends would kind of almost make fun of me because I could never miss a meal. Okay? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And it's funny now because just on my Instagram, I posted breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I was like, it was like a prophecy way back then, but a way different way of looking at it. Right. <laughs> but um, it's funny because my Halloween candy, even as a kid, my Halloween candy would sit in the bag in my closet for like the whole year. I just, oh. it would make me so sick. And I was just, eventually I'll get into, I mean, no matter how it made me feel, I just didn't care anymore. I just, my brain took over and the addiction took over and no matter how sick it may, would make me feel, it just had this pull on me. And I don't know, I think that must've changed maybe in my college years. So in my college years, just all the transitions of life and um, no more homemade meals every night. My mom was really good at doing that. And the activity level went way down. I had way more stress. I didn't know how to deal with it. And so I started stress eating a lot, emotional eating. Um, Denny's runs at 2 a.m. and Dairy Queen almost every day. I don't know how we afforded that, but, you know, just my my eating habits started to get really bad and I was stressed from a lot of different things and I would just emotionally eat so bad. That's how I started coping is with food. 
Um, everybody has a way of coping, and, and I know a lot of us cope with food. And um, that's really where I started to cope with food. And my brain would get dopamine hit or whatever from food, and I just kept kept doing it. And I'm like, okay, okay. But I mean, doesn't make you feel good. And I would literally sit down and I could eat a whole loaf of grandma sycamore's bread in one sitting. I would eat a whole loaf. And gosh, that did a number on my gut. I still had issues with food, but I just didn't quite know what they were. And um, I gained freshman 30 and I was starting to be depressed because of all that, but also because of the stressors going on in my, in my life. Um, I was really depressed at that time. Um, and then I, I got married. I tried, I tried to be more active to where I hadn't been during college very much. I have four kids and I gained 65 to 70 pounds with each of my pregnancies, which is a lot. Um, luckily, or I was blessed or whatever, I would try to stay active or whatever it was, I was actually able to get back to pre-pregnancy weight with all of my pregnancies. Um, but that I'm was just, yeah, that I'm just curious, when we, we talked the other day, but we didn't really talk about this. With your pregnancies, did, didn't you have food sensitivities during your pregnancy? I'm just curious how what, how you gained all the weight. You must have been either really sick or else it left you that. You I feel tolerate. like as, as time went on, my sensitivities got worse. Or I also think when you start cleaning your gut and you start eating healthier, sometimes it's like, it's like going into a room that smells. When you're in there, it smells you can't tell that it smells because you're in there. Oh, and you yeah. Clean out, you clean it out and you go back in and you're like, oh, the smell. I feel like that's what happens with our gut sometimes where it just my body got used to it. It didn't feel great. didn't feel good. I had a lot of issues during pregnancy. I got Bell's palsy um, and I was so I was so just inflamed and everything with my first daughter. Um and Bell's palsy is like an inflammation in your brain. And I don't know if it happened to because of food. I'm not really sure. But wow. um, I feel like later in the years, I started to really eliminate foods. And then my body, once I tried to have them again, it's like, no, like we need to keep those out because you cleaned us out. You know, now we're good. Do not do that to me again. And so I don't know if my body was sort of desensitized, but there was all these things going on. And I didn't feel good, but I don't know. <laughs> there you were. And I know that it just really got bad with yeah. after, after um, the pregnancies and it was not good. And you can talk started, about that as far as the real health issues that started. Yeah. So I started to, I mean, I was really getting into fitness and nutrition and I love to study it. And, um, and I was kind of starting to be a little more in tune with like, okay, these, some, the, this food doesn't make me feel good or whatever. I was trying to do elimination diets. I did paleo and tried to just eat clean and whole 30. And I actually ran challenges for people. I did nutrition challenges for people because I then got certified as a personal trainer and a health coach and nutrition coach. And so I was really into it, but I was still like, I didn't have a good relationship with the food. Um, and I was like, up and down, up and down with my weight. But the health crisis, um, I really started to have a lot of hormonal issues. My hormones were flipped, like progesterone was this instead of what it should be this and testosterone is this and it should have been this and just hypothyroid. So I got diagnosed with hypothyroid and then the food intolerances, tolerances. I went to doctors and they would do tests and blood tests and different things. And they were like, Sugar actually is my number one intolerance, gluten, casein, which is a protein in dairy, and then a bunch of little things. But those are like my big ones. And the doctors are like, this is just causing more stress on your body. And it's not helping your other issues like the thyroid. And then I got diagnosed. Well, I got told, tested for a gene mutation, MTHFR. It's somewhat common, but I had two copies of the bad gene. And that was really awakening in my body because sometimes it'll kind of stay asleep and it was awakening in my body or whatever the word is and really just causing all sorts of things because with that my body has a hard time detoxing and I can't process folic acid which is in flour most flour and processed food products 
um, I have to, I have to supplement with methyl um, B12 and, and folate and different things to keep it stable. Food, inflammatory foods are really dangerous. And so for that. And that, and that MTHFR, that also, it's hard for elimination too then, right? Because mm -hmm. you have the sensitivity to mm -hmm. lactose and the synthetic. Oh, yeah. Yes. Folic Lactose. acid. Oh, boy. And I'm since I was little, my my stomach doesn't process food. It doesn't, the food doesn't go through very easily. And that's been an issue since I was little. And those inflammatory foods were not helping the situation. And I was just so sick. And my adrenals, my body was so, so many different stressors on my body that my adrenals were then shutting down and weren't producing cortisol. I could barely function. All I could do was just lay on the couch and I had these four young kids and I felt like I couldn't take care of them. And I was getting even more depressed and my husband was worried about me. And I just felt like it was just such a hard time, like so many different stressors on my body and my body was literally shutting down. And I, the doctor, I went to many doctors, but this one doctor in particular said, your next step is basically death. Like your body is gonna, your organs are gonna start shutting down. Your body is in such a crisis mode and such a stressful state that like, that's where you're headed. And he's like, you need to eliminate all these stressors. We need to get your hormones under control. We need to get your adrenals functioning. And one way to do that is controlling the hypoglycemia, controlling what you eat. But we also need to take care of, I had leaky gut. So you, we need to take care of the leaky gut and, and heal your gut and get out these food sensitivities. Your body is so stressed. And exercise to me has always been something I just love. It's, I don't ever like punish myself with exercise. It's just, I feel strong. I love to do it. It's like my therapy. And at this time he said, even exercise, which I didn't have energy for it anyway, but he told me you cannot exercise. And he's like, I don't know for how long it ended up being nine, almost a month, almost a year of no exercise, which was really hard for me. But at the same time, I did, I couldn't function. I didn't have the energy. And he said, you can get your heart rate up and maybe do what you can in three minutes, but that's all you have is three minutes. That's all you can exercise is wow. three minutes. because if your heart rate gets too high and you stress your body out that much more, that's just another stressor on your body. And he's like, it was just so hard for me. It's just like a, such a depressing time. And like, no, with leaky gut, the food sens sensitivities were even worse than they already were. And so it took a lot of healing, um, my body just getting it not so stressed. And eventually, which seemed like forever, it took a lot of patience. I had to take special supplements for my gut and, you know, got on thyroid and different things for the thyroid issues, progesterone and testosterone and all the stuff. <laughs> um, and and the doctor put me on a strict anti-inflammatory diet and, but it just didn't have the structure. It just didn't have structure. He told me, right. this is what you can, can eat. This is what you can't eat. And it was a lot of stuff that I couldn't eat, um, including flour and sugar and all that. But it was just no start. He's like, here you go. Here's what you do. Here's what you can and can't eat. But I just need, my brain needs structure. And he also didn't understand food addiction. And I don't think I quite understood it at the time because he would call me every week and say, how's the nutrition going? And I'm like, I did pretty good, but you let me have dark chocolate. And I ended up having like five chocolate bars. <laughs> you know, like, he's like, why? Like, why would you do that? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. Is that, is that not normal? Like, do people just stick to right. this? Right. Oh, you know, Angela, you know, it just makes me sad to, to think. And and through this time, from what I understand from our talk before, you really were not that overweight. Somebody looking at you would not say that you have a weight problem. This is right. just another piece of what we're going through here. Number one, don't be judging anybody because you right. really don't know what they're going through and all these food sensitivities. Here you have this program, 
you're supposed to self-execute. And I think Susan talks about that in the book that, you know, we've gone on all these diets, but it's left up to us to know how much we're supposed to have. And if you're going to throw dark chocolate at me, well, okay, do it then. You know, it's like exactly five bars is too much. Like what? Yeah. 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 And it's true because you can look healthy on the outside and be totally not healthy on the inside. No. And so how did you yeah, find bright line eating then? I mean, yeah. So, oh gosh. So that was a roller coaster up and down. Obviously it took a lot of healing, a lot of patience, a lot of depression mixed in there. And I had read about sugar addiction, you know, in my studies. And I, I didn't, I was like, okay, sure. Sugar addiction. I just didn't quite, I, I mean, I knew I had a problem, but I was like, I don't know. But when I read the book, I read the book Bright Line Eating in 2018. And when I read that, I, it was like an aha moment for me because I just loved, I, for, I loved the science because I love studying all that, that type of stuff. But I loved the science of how sugar and flour affects the brain and, you know, the leptin and the dopamine and all those big words she talks about. But I could relate to a lot of what she was saying in the book. And I was like, oh my gosh, she's speaking from my brain. Like this, this, this is the stuff my brain goes through. And just the constant thinking about food constantly, I could go, I could go and eat a meal at a restaurant and be so stuffed, so full, but the, but coming, driving home, I'd be thinking, what am I going to eat when I get home? I'm so stuffed. But that's what I would be thinking. Like my, I was constantly, constantly thinking about food, thinking about what my snack, next snack would be in the middle of the night. If I had a craving, I, I had to, I had to just go get it. And the thing is with your hypoglycemia, you've been trained from a very early age to eat all the time so that you uh-huh. don't have a crash. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I'm just, I'm thinking that even though you told me before you didn't use elect, um, exercise as compensation, which some of us do like, Oh, if I exercise this many minutes, I can have a bar of dark chocolate. That's never how you used exercise, which is really great. No. At least you had that going for you, that it was just a pleasure to exercise. I think I know myself, it's like, I want to get to just that. I want yeah. to change my brain because all the time before it was for the purpose of diet and exercise, what we've been told by, you know, the industry for so long. Yeah. So you got into bright line eating and did you see a, an immediate change? So I knew, I knew it was for me because I knew I needed to avoid sugar and flour. Like that's just how my body functions best physically. And I was like, okay, well it has that component and it has the structure. I love how it's structured and talking about automaticity and just everything in there. I was like, okay, like this, it spoke to me and I knew it was for me. But it was so, I would stick to it. So between 2018 and 2021, like I was like, I would do it for 30 or 60 days. And then I would be like, oh, but why can't I have stevia or a smoothie or more protein? Or I was always trying to change something about it to fit my needs. Or why can't I have extra snack? Or I would do so good for breakfast and lunch. And then after dinner, I would just, that's my hard time after dinner. And so I was kind of doing it and then, and then not, and then doing it and then not, and getting myself into this like restrict and binge cycle, restrict and then binge. And then when I would go binge, it was like, I would get tons of treats, tons of treats, salty and sweet and, and whatever. And I would go in my bedroom and eat them all in one sitting in secret, you know, eating in isolation thing. And sometimes not in secret, just with my family, because I'm comfortable with my family, but I totally am an isolator. And for the most part, I would eat it in secret because it was so much food. And, you know, you're talking about like, I'm doing this, but I want to change it. Well, when we talked and I asked you the first time, you're like, well, I'm doing keto now. 
it's like <laughs> another oh, experiment. Okay, well, I, I think we'll have to wait then. <laughs> I know. So the research, why? It's like I knew I knew this was right in front of me, and for whatever reason, I just couldn't quite surrender to it at the time. You know, I just I just kept thinking. I, I was almost mad, mad at my body, mad at my brain. Like, why can't I just eat like a normal person? And why I was, not? and I've been a macro coach and, um, for this popular program and, and they teach, you know, moderation in all things and stick to your macros and stick to your calories and, and whatever. I was a coach, but I knew I am an abstainer and they would say, they would teach like, you're either an abstainer or you're a moderator, but you can learn to be a moderator. And I was really hoping I could learn to be a moderator. And I've tried and tried and tried and experimented and done so many, come back to Bright Line Eating and then experimented and researched. And I know that I am, and I'm, I am an abstainer and 100% for me is way easier than 99. And I don't know why I have to keep teaching myself this over and over and over because I know I'm an abstainer. I'm not ever going to be a moderator, no matter how many times someone can tell me I'm going to learn to be a moderator. I just know my brain and I've learned the lesson over and over. And hopefully it's, I don't have to learn it anymore. Um, well, this past year, you felt like you have actually reached surrender. How did that happen? Did you start, um, did you start taking in more habits that you were being more aware of or how did that transition happen? Because yeah, that was so interesting that, because you had done research again for the umpteenth time, mm -hmm. but you're coming back because one, you know, you feel better, right? Yep. And yes. you love the structure. I do. And mentally for me, the structure just makes me so happy and it helps me. It helps the food chatter go away. The food freedom really does come if you just follow the plan. And I could start seeing the benefits physically and mentally. I could feel the benefits. But for whatever reason, I was not quite surrendering all the way. And so I was leaving some of that addiction able to like creep in. And no matter how, how bad food makes me feel, that addiction just has that pull on me. The binge eating, the emotional eating, it just has that pull on me that's in that moment, no matter how bad it makes me feel, the food just takes control. And it's like, I finally had to, so actually in 2020, I turned 40 and COVID and everything, I gained 40 pounds. And um, I was having the foods that I shouldn't way more often than I, than I was. And all those symptoms were coming back. Like when I eat those foods, the sugar and the flour, especially my body aches so bad, like down to my bones, it's a deep, deep ache and it's all over. And my joints are inflamed. My joints hurt. I have trouble breathing. Like I'm breathing through a straw and um, headaches, of course the stomach aches and my body can't process the food constantly nauseous. I actually get sores in my throat, acne, oh, man. the hypoglycemia is worse, of course, and dizziness, blurry eyes, brain fog. I mean, the mood swings. I mean, I, I feel like when I'm in the ditch with food and having sugar and flour, I can't control the way I deal with stress. I can't control my mood. And all those physical symptoms are just horrible. And I started to feel those again in 2020. And I was like, so scared. Oh gosh. Well, you know what? You're so scared and you have four kids. You're a wife, you're a mother, you know, you're doing like probably some of this coaching still, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're still doing life, but you are just dying inside because you can't eat what you want to eat. You don't want to admit it. Like, I, I know what works, but I don't want to do that, you know, and it just yeah. takes so much pain sometimes, doesn't it? Yeah. And I just felt myself going back to that time. It was in 2013 and 14 where I really had that health crisis and it scared me so much. I was like, I cannot go back to that. Like that was the worst. And I cannot let myself go back to that. Like, what is the problem? Like, you don't want to go back to that. And so 
Um, that happens every time that I eat sugar and flour. It really does. All those dumb symptoms. Um, and so I knew like, I just, this is, I had to accept that this is the body I was given. This is the brain I was given. And bright line eating is the answer for me. And I felt that. And I knew that. And I had to finally just, I did a lot of mindset work during that time as well. And I could talk more about that. But January 1st, 2022, I fully surrendered, just fully accepted that I have issues with food. I'm a food addict. I said it out loud. I actually said it out loud. And I feel like admitting it is the first step. I have an issue with binge eating. And I, my body just physically can't handle some foods like sugar and flour, especially. And my brain can't function with it either. And so I had to accept that this was the brain and body I was given. And I just need to let it go. I just need to let it go. And I was like, I've had 42 years of eating junk food. Like I, I can let it go. Like that's long enough. Right. I don't need it anymore. Oh man. I mean, that's a long time to eat junk food. <laughs> well, you know, and I you- had a lot of good, I had a lot of good clean eating moments. I had a lot, but this junk food was still creeping in there. Yeah. And so you don't even want to get off the train. Like don't, don't. get off the train. Just keep going. Just keep going. Yes. And I'm scared to even, and, and now, so I haven't had any sugar or flour since January 1st, finally. And I've had moments of that before. I went hundred days in my past of no gluten, no sugar, no dairy, you know, things like that. But I would still allow the stevia and the honey and things. And so right. six months now I've gone without any sugar at all, any flour at all. And I am like, I feel great. Of course, physically, obviously my body, all those symptoms, like that's a non-scale victory right there because all those symptoms that I've struggled with years are gone. Wow. And I don't even wow. want to think about, I don't even want to think about having sugar and flour because well, I'm just surrendered. Yes. And why? There's no point. Well, let's talk about some of the things that help support this program for you because it's not all just fun and games. I know that because if you're like me at all, I just had a moment today that I really had to think about it. Like, no, hunger is not an emergency. I'm going to make it another two hours. (laughs) It's going to work out. Just hang on, Noreen. So, but what do you, you did talk about a few things that was really great. Starting with journaling, I believe. Mm Mm-hmm. So I, even though I've been off sugar and flour since January 1st, I've still had, I've been pretty good with, with my meals and keeping my meals, but a few times, especially at night, because that's my time, you know, to want to snack. And that's just the pathways in my brain, the habits that I have had for years and years and the emotional eating, like it doesn't just go away. And so I've had to try and do a lot of, whether it's the mindset work or just distracting myself because Popcorn has actually been an issue that's keeping like the food addiction alive in me and whether popcorn is good or bad or whatever, it doesn't matter. But for me, it keeps the addiction alive and I could binge eat on popcorn like till the cows come home. So for me, I've had to eliminate it. And I, and I don't know, maybe in the future, I'll be able to control myself with that and have like a perfect portion. (laughs) I'm not even going to play with that right now. Um, And so I've had to, yeah, like the journaling. We're all going like this. Don't do it. (laughs) Don't do it. I know. I've learned. And it is tough. But journaling. So at night, when I'm, okay, at night, I'm like, okay, dinner's over. The kids are like chill. It's almost bedtime, but not quite. And so I want to go in my room and watch like a show or whatever. But then that's when the thoughts come in. And so I have to distract myself with either, you know, journaling or just coloring my little color chart. Oh Um, yeah. Journaling because getting my thoughts out, feeling the feelings instead of feeding them. So writing my thoughts out helps me a lot. 
And that's where my Instagram and stuff has really helped a lot too, because I'm able to just, sometimes I have so many thoughts just swirling around and I just need to get it out. And, and can you say the, the handle for your Instagram? I put it on the slideshow, but for someone listening by podcast, what is it? Sure. Yeah. It's just Instagram at ang, so A-N-G dot healthy, happy, fit. Healthy, happy, fit. That's what I've yeah. always strived to be is healthy, happy, and fit. Great. And and yeah, bright line eating has brought me all of those things. Like another you know, thing that you uh, you told me though is this letter that you wrote, and I love that. Can you talk about that, or if you have it, maybe you can even read a little bit of it. What is the letter that you wrote? Okay, yeah. So I like to. It's just kind of a tool that I like to use. I've I've done this for quite a few years where. I just want to envision myself like at my healthiest, my happiest, my goal, whatever it is. And so I write a letter from my future self um, saying like exactly how I feel, exactly how I just, just every, just the details of how I would feel as my future self. So I act as if I'm at that place, my healthiest, my happiest, my future self. And I write a letter to my now self. And so I can read some of it. It's on my phone, just on the notes on my phone. Um, and it's, there's, it's been revised, like every year it's kind of revised. And it's funny because I was just reading my latest one that I wrote months ago, like back in January or even before the year started, I wrote it and it's crazy because I'm now feeling a lot of these things in my letter. There's still a few things, but it's so amazing because at the moment when I was writing this letter, I was like, it's just a hope for the future. But now it's actually coming. It's, it's, it's materializing. Real. It's like, mm -hmm. and it's you that have done the work. Yeah. And I think envisioning it and, and really feeling how it would feel and picturing how it would feel has a lot of power. And so this letter just helps me do that. So did you want me to read it? Yeah, if you want to read part of it or just, you know, you don't have to read the sure. whole thing, but okay, to give an idea. Just simple. Um, so I just said that this is my future self. I'm so proud of myself. I'm so proud and happy that I didn't give up, especially during the, the times that were tough. I feel so amazing physically and mentally. I feel true food freedom, freedom from the addiction of sugar and flour and freedom from binge eating. I'm so glad I don't give into the food or emotional eat anymore. And at the time I was like, <laughs> I can't wait for this day. And now, you know, it's here. I don't eat in secret anymore. And I have true peace and integrity with food. The automaticity with foods, food feels amazing. I have mental clarity and so much more space in my mind rather than constantly thinking about food all day. All my crazy symptoms from food are gone. Um, it feels great to be confident. I feel great in my swimming suit. I feel great in my clothes. I don't dread getting into a swimsuit anymore. This is the best feeling in the world. I feel strong, energized, renewed. I can see some toning in my muscles and I feel strong in my workouts. I'm so glad to be giving my body the nutrients it needs. It's what I've always wanted to be consistent at doing. It's what my body loves. I feel so good. I'm so proud of myself. What a difference it has made. The hard times were all worth it. Wow, that is so great. I'm going to do that. I had never thought yeah, of doing I think, it. And I think it's just such a great idea, empowering. Mm -hmm. And just, you know, what you're saying now is, I, I feel your joy as you're reading it. Because you've been making that come true. By step by step, exactly. taking one big step after another, maybe little steps. But for you especially going back and forth is just so maddening. I know you said it was like, what, a sine wave or something that is just constants ups and downs. I want to get into the mm -hmm. exercise piece because that's how we got acquainted with each other. I actually had said one time in your exercise group, hey, anybody want to do 10 squats a day with me? And I because I was doing 10 squats a day. This was during COVID. Like I figured I couldn't do anything else, but I could do that. And so I was on a mission. I did it for like a long time. 
till I hurt my back. Yeah. And there was a challenge that I put the sheet in your group. But then after I hurt my back, then I asked if you'd take it over and you did, obviously, and you do even way more than that. So talk about why or not even so much why, but what goes on in this group? I mean, because exercise is something we kind of back away from, but you love exercise. It's your happy, it's your happy place. Not to compensate yeah. for food to eat, but just because it right. gives you health and energy. And probably you're just so grateful you can exercise after your exactly. crisis, your health crisis, that every mm-hmm. time that you can exercise, it's like, wow, I can't believe I can do this. So can you talk about mm-hmm. that? And I really am hoping that you can maybe give some advice for starter exercise, like what you might suggest like for me. Okay. Okay. So I started and I started the We Eat Bright and Exercise group in 2018, because I wanted a place of support for people who do exercise. And I know and it is so important to if you don't have that, that piece, if it's not already a habit, um, you really need to focus on the nutrition first. Like that is, that is a huge core of what we need to do to get those habits with nutrition. But for me, it was already a habit to exercise. I didn't take, it didn't take any extra willpower or anything. It's just a habit that I've had for years and it makes me happy and it helps with my stress and, and different things. And so I started this group for people like that, or for people when they are ready for exercise to come in and and get some, some help and support with what to do. So, so yeah. Um, Sorry, what was another question you asked about it? I think that maybe if people are like me, I really have put off exercise. There were times in my life I exercised every day at a gym, got a trainer, the whole works. But when I started this, I like Mm -hmm. stopped because that was effort. That wasn't like something, even though I was doing it all the time, it wasn't really something I wanted to do. So. How would you, and now I'm totally out. I'm like, I totally need strength. What would you start with? What would you suggest? Mm-hmm. Beyond like so, walking. I mean, like something maybe with. Okay. Somebody. I mean, the biggest place to start, if you're just getting into exercise and you want to create a habit with exercise, obviously you need to start with, I mean, don't go, you're not doing anything now. So don't go gung ho and say, I'm going to do five days this week. Cause you probably won't stick to it. And you need to do something that you enjoy or you won't stick to it. So find something that you enjoy. And sometimes that takes trying a lot of different things, but, but strength training has so many benefits, but also you do want the benefits from cardiovascular training as well, whether it's the walking or riding bike or swimming or, or whatever it is, dancing, whatever it is you can find that you love to do. But, um, it's hard to say which one is more, I know you had asked in the past too, like which one is more important. It's hard to say because cardio is so good for your heart and reduces blood pressure where strength training can help increase your metabolism because the more muscle you have, the, the easier your body burns. You want strength for, to support your joints and your bones and it's good for bones and preventing osteoporosis. Um, They both have benefits. So I would say start with something that you enjoy. If you can start with strength training, it has a lot of benefits, but yeah, go for a walk, go for a bike ride, run something for your cardio respiratory system as well. Um, But it's so easy to start with basic strength training. You don't have to go to a gym. You could do some things at home, like you were doing the squats, or if you have little dumbbells or um, water bottles or books or whatever, just start head to toe and think, okay, my shoulders, let's do some shoulder press. Let's do some bicep curls. Let's do some squats. Um, And form is everything in strength training. So watch that form, strengthen that core, do some planks or your core is your stomach and your back. And you really need to strengthen your core in order to get stronger with your other body parts, your limbs. So work on strengthening your core. Um, even if you're just doing balancing movements, um, 
things like that will help strengthen your core or even balance on one leg and do some bicep curls slow and controlled that helps your core, but also helps your biceps. But just, I have some tips in exercise, um, videos and things also in my group, um, in one of the tabs, I think. Okay. And so the name of the group again is we eat bright and exercise. Right. And what do you think about jump roping? Oh, I love jump roping. Jump roping That's is what great. I'm thinking about starting, actually. It might be and, and jumping. It's great for your heart. It's great cardio. Um, it's great high intensity exercise too, because you could do you could do as much as you can and then stop and rest. As much as you can, stop and rest. That's great for your body. Uh, just be careful because jumping movements can be if you have you need to be easier on your joints. Um, but as long as you're doing it, it's great. What somebody told me who I worked with for a while, she had osteoporosis and her physician told her to jump rope, that it actually is a way mm. of, of increasing possibly Strengthen bone density. Bones. So that's where I thought, for sure, you know, I'm level six and yeah. I need to keep my bones strong. Um, another thing that you, we talked about yes. a little bit, yeah, go ahead. So you're, you're saying alternate. And I know that there were like three things that it was the squats, the planks, and one more push-ups. So you would suggest alternating mm -hmm. those things with maybe cardio the other days of walking or jump rope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. For sure. And the way you're going to get your body to change or the way you're going to increase your strength is by, so say I do 10 squats, 10 push-ups, 10 or 30 second plank. I do that three times a week. Well, the real way to change, you're going to, if you just did that every week, did that, that's fine. But the way your body will really start to change is with progressive overload. So if you increase the amount of squats that you do or increase the weight, like maybe try some dumbbells or say I'm doing squats with, with 20 pound dumbbells. If I do that three times this week, next week, I want to try and do either more reps. So more squats or increase the weight, even just a little bit. So no matter what you're doing, even if you're doing a walk, say you're walking down the street. Okay. I'll do that three times this week, but next week I'm going to walk around down the street and down the other street or around the block. And then the next week, I'm going to walk around two blocks. And then the next week, like progressive overload. Just remember that because progressive overload on your body and on your muscles, that's how you're going to get um, better at it. And your muscles are going to start changing and you're going to start seeing those strength gains in your body and your body composition will start to change. If you were to, if you were to suggest like an amount, an, a number of minutes for say, per se, like how much, how long, like I know like squats and stuff, it's maybe more just the repetitions of them, but like how long or, or should we go just by distance, like walking or whatever? Like, is it minutes? Like, should we strive for something? If you're just, if you are just out there walking, the suggested amount of time per week is for any moderate intensity exercise like that, is 150 minutes per week. So that would equal to about 30 minutes per five days. And again, if you're not at that level at all, then start small, but work up to it, work up to it and you'll get there. And that's what's needed for all these health benefits that you read about in health textbooks and, and physical education textbooks and things. Um, I'm actually, I'll be done with my bachelor's in five weeks in physical education and health education and recreation. So I've learned all this stuff through that too, but also through my personal training and nu nutrition coach training and stuff. But, wow. Uh, that's, that's incredible. And early congratulations to you. I know that you're going to really put all of that knowledge to use by helping many people. So I can't believe the time, but I want to oh ask gosh. you a couple more questions. The one, which probably is obvious, but you said non-scale victory. 
What would you say are your non-scale victories? And I'm assuming like your health has improved so much, but are there others too? Oh, I mean, all those physical symptoms are gone. They're just gone. Um, my mental, like I am literally so happy. Like I'm mentally just so, so happy. And I'm able to handle the stressors in my life so, so like, so even kill, like I'm just so better at handling the stressors in my life. And um, it's been a stressful year. And I've learned like, I can't control what goes on around me. I can't control what other people do or what, whatever the stressors in my life, I can't control, but I can control what I do with my body. And being controlling that has really, it's just made such a difference for me mentally. So mentally and physically, I just have so many non-skilled victories, um, but just feeling better in my clothes and just feeling stronger in my workouts or just, I mean, just feeling so happy is just victory. It's got to have made such a difference in your family. I mean, when you're depressed mm -hmm. and sick, I mean, really sick, I mean, yeah. you can, I, I don't know. I've, I've been really sick in my life at times and I'm not much of anything to anybody. So like this first line of action of getting your food right, you know how important it is to you. Just so incredibly important that it kind of just ripples to every part of your life. Like mm -hmm. truly. And yeah, my kids have gone through some hard things and I've been able to like handle those stressors and walk them through it like so much easier. And I'm like, how, like, I never could have, I don't know. I just handled it so well. I handle situations so much better and easier. Just my brain is just so free and so clear. And it's just amazing. Like I'm able, I just feel like a better mom, a better wife, just a better friend, a better, whatever. I just feel so, so good. much better. So mm -hmm. good. Yeah. So with that, I'm going to ask you one more question, Angela, with all okay. that you have been through, all of it. And again, at first glance, someone may say, well, she doesn't even have a weight problem. You know, you're a few pounds over. It's not like a crisis, but for you, it was way more yeah. than what could be expected. What would you say to someone who just really doesn't want to give up all those foods, but you're, you know, you're handing them a thin thread of hope, what would you say to them? Oh, <laughs> that they don't want to give up the foods. I mean, it's so worth it if you do. I promise it's so, so worth it. And sometimes I forget, well, in the past, I would forget how good this feels. And for some reason, I would just go back in the ditch. But like, just remember how good this feels and don't go back there. But um yeah ah, what was the question <laughs> that's all good that's that's all that anybody really needs to know that there is hope beyond even a health crisis there is hope yeah and there uh, is hope and this i really learned that like food is medicine it really is and to me i know that food is medicine and the way we treat our body and take care of it like our body is a gift and i feel like we should take care of it the best that we can. And when we're doing that, I know we are blessed. We are just blessed when we are trying to take care of ourselves physically, mentally. Um, it's Obviously, just emotionally, everything. Yeah. So, well, Angela, our time is up, but um, for you, yeah. your, your time is just beginning with what you're going to bring into the world. All of everything that you have gone through, health-wise, physically, everything. Now with this new education, all the nutrition education, and now real life, like you've lived it with all the food sensitivities and everything. What a plus you are going to be in the world, just educating. I, it's really exciting to know that you're going to be out there and uh, have so much to offer. So I thank you so much for your willingness to share tonight. You know, thank you for the information oh, that thank you've you. given. And any last words? Thank you. 
Oh gosh, something we didn't talk about was mindset and that is huge. I feel like your mindset is your ultimate determination of your success. And so, I mean, just believing that you can change, believing that you can do it, like that's the first step. You have to believe that you can. And I feel like a lot of times we tell ourselves, this is too hard, I can't do it. Or we prove to our brain over and over that we, that we can't. And so just saying that we can't do it or this is too hard, we end up self-sabotaging. And we have to remember that our thoughts lead to our feelings and our feelings lead to our actions and the responses that we get and the results that we get. And so that mindset for me has been huge. And the way I talk to myself or the language that I use, like, it's not that I can't have that food. It's that I truly don't want it, you know? And sometimes my kid will eat my, sometimes my kids will even say, Oh, you can't have that. And I'm like, no, I don't want it. You know, it's just that little mindset that change, that little positive language that you use with yourself can make a huge difference. Because if you say you don't want it, and then you don't eat it, now you are fortifying yourself. I don't want it, and I don't eat it. Yeah. And also just like embrace the struggles. Like, I feel like I've learned and been refined as a person. I, um, through all the struggles and the hardships and the things I wish I wasn't going through at the time. It's made me more refined as a person. It's helped me learn because failure is not an option. You have to learn that there is no failure. You either get what you set out to do or you learn a lesson. And that's where you can start to let go of the shame and the guilt because there is no failure. If I make a mistake, okay, I'm going to learn something from it and I'm going to be better for it. And so all these struggles You have a picture in the slideshow of the Japanese art form that I like um, because it's broken pottery that was broken, but it was put back together with gold. And I feel like we can help others through our struggles and we can also be repaired with gold and be put back together through all the struggles, through all the hardships, through all the feeling broken or whatever. If we just embrace the beauty of the struggles, it can really be a beautiful work of art and um, it's okay to struggle. It is. And because it has brought you through to what you, who you are right now, stronger, wiser, really, and willing to keep doing what you know is right. Um, One more question. Just what is the Instagram name again? Oh, and so a N G dot healthy, happy fit. And what is the Facebook group? We eat bright and exercise. Great. Well, I hope a lot of people go there and look for you. And I know you have a lot of good information on that site. So I am going to close as I do each week. Thank you, Angela. Good night. Stay bright. Don't let the bed bugs bite. Good night, everybody. Good night. So, Angela, how would you like to play Three Question Thursday? Sure, I would love to. (laughs) All right, where nobody knows what I'm going to ask, including me. (laughs) (laughs) You know what we didn't talk about is the food, all right? We didn't talk about food. Do you have any go-tos? Because you do, you're very sensitive to a lot of food. Still, that didn't change. So what, what do you go to? Oh, let's see. For breakfast, I usually do. I feel so much better, like when I'm having a good protein, like scrambled eggs, mashed sweet potatoes with little cinnamon sprinkled on them, and mm-hmm. ounces of fruit, whatever that is, an apple or sometimes banana and blueberries, whatever it is. So I keep my food pretty simple, and that food, like the sweet potato and the eggs, make me feel really good. If I'm in a rush, like like I work at a high school, and so. Um, right now it's summer, so I can take more time to prepare. I'm not working. Um, But during my work time, I always make overnight oats the night before. I just do my one ounce of oats, one ounce of peanut butter, my banana and blueberries to make up the six ounces of fruit. And then I'll do four ounces of unsweetened almond milk, which 
that's not really a lot of protein. I feel better with protein. So that's why the eggs and stuff feel better to me, but that's really convenient because I make it the night before and then put a lid on my little glass container and I just take it with me to work. You can eat it cold or I can warm it up in the microwave at work and eat that for breakfast. Um, I'm, assuming I, it's, um, I'm assuming it's gluten-free. Yes, oats. I don't, uh-huh, I eat gluten-free oats and the oats is pretty much the only type of grain that I eat. Otherwise it's potato or rice or quinoa because that's gluten-free. As long as you get the gluten-free kind to make sure it's not contaminated with gluten. Um, but I don't, I don't eat Triscuits um, or anything like that because it's wheat. So lunch, it's either, honestly, it's either cauliflower rice or, and like my protein, whatever protein I had, and then whatever fat, just super simple. And then fruit on the side, or I'll have just a big taco salad or something like that. You know, just the fresh raw veggies and, and, and meat and fat. I keep my meals just super simple. I don't really follow like big recipes and all these different ingredients, but, you know, using seasonings like onion salt and garlic salt and cumin and paprika, I try to use, you know, seasonings to flavor things up. Yeah. That's great, especially in that cauliflower rice. That really, it picks up the, oh, the flavor. Go ahead. A favorite dinner lately of mine is um, carrot fry nachos. And I know you're not supposed to make things into like fries or whatever, but carrots are pretty darn good for you. And so I just roast, I slice carrots, peel them, slice them, the real big carrots, not the baby carrots. Um, and And then just roast those at 425 degrees for like, 35 minutes or however tender and, and um, cooked you want them. And then I'll just put taco meat on top and then like avocado or sour cream or in salsa. It's so good. Ooh, that's, that's quite a meal. Question yeah. here from Kayleen. What are your best mindset tips? Ooh, good question. I, first of all, like I said, just, to reset your mindset, you have to believe that you can achieve. Believing is the first step. Um, and really getting to the, the roots of the tree are like our thoughts and our beliefs. And then that leads to the trunk, which is like our, our feelings. And then the branches, that's our actions and our responses that we get. And so really just believing that you can and the way you talk to yourself um, and then just do it. Just take the action because you're not always going to be motivated and you have to learn to be self-disciplined and embrace failure. Like I talked about, there is no failure. It's either a lesson or you get out what you set to do and just stop caring about what other people think or what other people, how people think you eat or what you do. Just stop, start doing what's best for you because you are you and you know what's best for you. And then it's going to take some work to get there. So be willing to put in the work, even when you struggle, it's okay. Cause you're going to get stronger from the struggle. And also I always thought like, I can do it on my own. I don't need anybody to help me. I can just follow this plan and everything's great. But I had to learn that support is everything and it's okay to be struggling. And you, you need to socialize with people who you want to be like. And you start, you will start to be like those people. So socialize with bright line eating people and get in some support groups and don't free, be afraid to get a mastermind group or whatever, but lean on the support and you don't have to do it all by yourself. And that's great. Yeah. There's so many more, just be grateful, write down what you're grateful for every day, celebrate the small wins, but yeah, just embrace the beauty of your struggles. I have one more question. This is probably an oddball question, but I know when we talked the other day, this was important to you. You started making your bed every day. Why is that important to you? Mm -hmm. So I've never been someone who made my bed <laughs> and it would drive my husband crazy because he loves getting into a made bed. And I had read, there's a book about it actually written by, I don't know, someone who was in the, I can't remember what he was in, but the Air Force or something. But yeah, he talked about how making your bed is just a simple task. And that's something we could do to start the day. And by doing the simple task that was hard for me, it would just set the tone of my day. I could, it's, 
it just, it just, oh, how do I explain it? It just some brings, kind of accomplishment, one little thing done, one little thing done. And that sets up your whole day. And if you could do that one little thing, what else can you accomplish in your day? I mean, doing that one little thing was so hard for me in the beginning. And I was like, no, I can change. Sometimes we have this comfort zone and it's like, you don't want to go higher or lower than that little comfort zone. And our brain thinks it's scary to go out of the comfort zone. And I had to prove to myself that I can change. And by making my bed, I proved to my brain, I can change. I can make my bed every single day. I can set myself up for wins for that day. And it proves that I can change in other ways of my life too. And so making your bed, it's a simple task, but it can set you up for success. And I think that is a big shift in mindset too. Mm -hmm. I mean, accomplishment, when everything else is going crazy in the world around you, to do these simple things, to have some accomplishment, staying bright, like knowing that I can do this one thing, I cannot control everything else, but I can exactly. do this one thing and I know that it leads to better a better me. So with that, I'm going to close. And Angela, I just want to thank you so much for your willingness, for coming on and telling your story on Starting Out Bright. Thank you for that. And thank you for playing Three Question Thursday. It's been a great. Thank you, Noreen. It's my pleasure to be here. I'm so honored to be here. And thank you so much. And for what you do all the time, I think you're amazing at it. So. Oh, thank Thank you. you. And you're welcome. Good night, everybody. Stay bright. Good night. Good night, everybody. Thanks for being here.